I am pleased to have the opportunity to address this message on the occasion of World Osteoporosis Day and to express support and commitment from the European Commission to the millions of people suffering from osteoporosis and their families all over the world. Experts estimate that one in three women and one in five men over the age of 50 will suffer from an osteoporotic fracture. In the European Union, someone suffers a fracture as a result of osteoporosis every 30 seconds. The burden of osteoporosis will increase over the coming years for several reasons. The main reason is the aging of the population. With an increasingly larger proportion of older people, the yearly number of hip fractures alone in the EU is expected to more than double over the next 50 years. However, although clearly there is nothing we can do about aging, there are many other risk factors that we can do something about. These include excessive drinking of alcohol, smoking, being unhealthily underweight, poor nutrition, vitamin D deficiency, eating disorders, insufficient exercise, and low dietary calcium intake. The European Commission is well aware of the importance of the osteoporosis problem in Europe and has been supporting actions under our health program to help tackle this issue. More generally, the Commission has taken an overall health determinants approach aiming at addressing risk factors that provoke a broad range of conditions. Another action has been to develop monitoring and comparison of health across the Union. The Commission can be proud of its contribution to some of the most important actions of the International Osteoporosis Federation. We also welcome and support the very positive work undertaken in recent years by the European Union Osteoporosis Consultation Panel. We hope to continue the cooperation between the Commission and this panel and to work together to harness the public health and research action capacities of the Commission with the solid scientific knowledge of the panel. We may be able to explore ways of doing more to monitor osteoporosis such as through the development of fracture registries, better data on the prevalence, mortality, morbidity, and associated costs of osteoporosis, and supporting international collaboration on therapeutic options. We also know very well that osteoporosis needs specific strategies in terms of research. The framework programs have not neglected osteoporosis. Some projects have provided essential evidence on incidence, risk factors, and means of prevention of hip fracture in the Mediterranean region, and on prevalence of vertebral deformities, their risk factors, and health impact. This support will continue under the current FP7. To finish, May I wish the International Osteoporosis Federation and all those involved every success in your ongoing and future initiatives. This important health issue will remain a priority in the coming months and indeed years for all of us.